my name is Yonela and today we will be tackling the topic of Xhosa traditions. Um, now Xhosa traditions are passed on by our elders and a lot of things from the tradition are questionable, um, especially when one becomes Christian, um, mainly because they involve ancestors, people that have passed on. Um, so today we've asked Pastor Voyo, who has a lot of knowledge about the Xhosa culture. Um, we're hoping that he'll inform us um, whether these traditions are godly, beneficial, or if they're necessary at all, and if they define one's identity. So Pastor Voyo, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, thank you so much, my sister. My name is Vuyo Mkonwana. I am a pastor of Christ Community Baptist Church uh, here in East London. Uh, I have been a, a leader um, for 25 years now. Um, first one, uh, the first church, and the second 20 years, which has finished with another church. Uh, I'm, I'm a trained theologian, a practical theologian, and also a social scientist. Uh, with an interest uh, in um, issues that has to do with um, people uh, like your traditions. Currently, I'm finishing up my PhD, uh, whose focus, uh, the topic is on um, the norms, uh, the ideal norms of uh, masculinity and fatherhood uh, in the Hossa uh, people and more focusing on um, studying the two institutions that socializes men within uh, the black culture, which is uh, your traditional education schools um, and secondly, the church. So one is looking at what those two institutions are actually teaching men. Um, so uh, that is my area of, of, of interest and study uh, currently. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So in, in, in also being a, a Tosa, working in the environment of Tosa people, having grown up in the environment of uh, people who practice uh, Tosa traditional customs, you know, and, and also having counseled and work with people like that. So one has a bit of knowledge around that. So a big part of being on Tosa is Amasiko. And Amasiko existed way before the Bible was introduced to the Tosa people. Um, so Christians that do practice Amasiko, they quote the Bible verse um, that says, Jesus has not come to abolish the law, but has come to fulfill it. Now in the Corsa translation, the law is omitted, but for some reason, the phrase has changed to, I have not come to abolish Amasiko. So Umteto has now become Amasiko. Um, so one will ask, why should now I stop my closer traditions? Whereas Jesus himself, when he was on earth, he followed the law of Moses. When he got circumcised, he got circumcised according to the law of Moses. So now as a closer person, if I become a Christian, why now do I have to change? and not follow the Kosa Amasiko anymore? I think that's um, a, 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 an important question. Uh, probably let's start by looking at the verse uh, that you, you, you have quoted, that people at times are confused by or rely, uh, relies on for their argument and position around the issue of rituals, is, uh, because basically we, 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 we have to realize that one, in that verse, Jesus was not talking about the ritual part. 
remember that if you look in, a, in any community, there are uh, three issues that are interrelated. You've got your traditions, you've got rituals, you've got custom. You see, those are, are three interrelated things, but they are not necessarily the same. Uh, so if you look at the Jewish um, culture, there was the traditions, there was the rituals, and there was customs, the same in any way. So when Jesus is, is, is speaking there about the law, primarily he is speaking about the, 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 the 10 laws, uh, which in a way are underpinned by the two main laws, love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. The 10 laws, in a way, comes out of those. Now, he is not talking about the ritual part because the ritual part was what he had come to destroy. It. But he was talking about loving your neighbor as you love yourself, do not lie, do not kill, and all of those things that I have not come to destroy that, you know, because if you look at the ritual part where they would have to slaughter things and all those things, he had come to replace that, but not to take away the laws that tells us how to live with one another. So when people are using that verse, they are using it incorrectly and even itself is a, a misinterpretation uh, of the words. The, the writers there were supposed to have put umteto basabinsa amasiko which is totally different from umted. Basically, r rituals uh, changes, you know, and Jesus did not come to deal with or, 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 or to affirm rituals. He had come to affirm the law that had to do with the, how we relate one to another and to God. Okay. So what you're saying is this Matthew 5, 17, is not related to Amasik. No, not at all. Not at all. So, um, as part of your research, I believe that you are researching about the initiation, which is a very big part of the Kosa culture. Um, so now, when a young man is introduced to manhood around the age of 17, um, he has to undergo a couple of rituals. And when you're Christian now, how do you avoid this rituals? Um, two things. Two things. Uh, one, if your, your parents are the followers of Christ, it becomes an easy thing because automatically, if they know the, the ritual parts are not part of the initiation process. We have to remember that uh, circumcision is like your 21st birthday. It is a stage in which a young male gets into where now you are no longer a child or a boy. Now you are entering a, an age or a stage where you become a man. So. The, if, if you go back uh, when it uh, all started, it, it started with one, with an intention to take young boys into a secluded place, train them um, by teaching them morals, by teaching them history, by teaching them politics, uh, by teaching them um, um, social values, of loving your, your community of protection. And in there, uh, originally, it was a, a, a one-year training period, you know. And over time, as a result of the changes that took place, it went to six months, it went to three months, and now, basically, it's about three weeks, you see. So the, the intention then, it was a training school. There's a, a, a researcher up in, in the Free State where he speaks about this, where he says uh, the traditional initiation school was a black people 
as higher education system, you see. So that was the intention. And there, then, it did not have the things that currently it has. The lot of initiation and, and uh, sorry, slaughtering of, of things, um, uh, uh, shedding of blood. The whole issue was about training these young men, helping them to understand their responsibility and, and, and helping them to be able to take that responsibility, you see, ability. And over there, for an example, one of the things that was done is that literally they would start their, more, their small house where they have to start cooking for themselves, uh, grow their own food, uh, uh, look after their own animals, so where they were, literally no one was cooking for them at home. They had to cook. They have to go and work the fields. They have to plow and get food from there. They have to look after uh, your goats, uh, your, 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 your animal, and get milk from there so that they were able to take care of themselves. And they were trained military tactics how to fight. Because remember, at those times, there were a lot of Nanzika tribal wars that were taking place. You see, so it was a training ground for the next uh, level of uh, leaders, men in society that will be able to protect and, and, and take the nation to another level. You see, so it's a training school. Now, uh, uh, the challenge is that as the time uh, went on and we lost a lot of memory uh, as Tosa people, if, if, if you go back into history, Apart from the, the, the frontier wars that we, we had fought, we had a lot of um, challenge around Nongause. A lot of people died during uh, the, the Nongause saga. And a lot of children had to grow up alone without that knowledge of who we are. And along that, they had to come up with ways of trying to deal with the trauma and um, trying to deal trying to develop an understanding of who they are as a people. So a number of, 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 of things started to come in. So the rituals in by themselves have no bearing in the making of the man. You see, uh, 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 people do those things because they, they, they believe that the blood of the animal has some kind of power over a person, but in reality, they have no bearing. So if one is a believer, there is no reason for them to slaughter goats, to slaughter sheep or whatever, because the issue of them in there is about healing and being taught, you know, the lessons of what a man is and what their responsibility should be about, you see. So for me, uh, the answer would be to someone who is a believer to say, when you are a believer, there is no reason for you to have rituals because the belief that people have in the rituals of protection, of blessing, and all those things are the things that we get free from Christ Jesus and from following him, you see. So a person who's a believer, there is no reason for them to do that. When I was of that age, because I was already born again, um, when I went through that, I spoke to my parents. I told them that I don't believe in this. You know, I asked them, you know, that guys, please. And they, they heard me. They have seen my commitment and all those things. So they heard me and they allowed me to go through the process without uh, going through that. And even though in my family, uh, the, the, my father's siblings, they take all their children um, to the circumcision school at the same time, even though the others um, had imbeleko and had I I issue of I I I in in Nzika, ukhelwa kwe kwe on the seventh day. For me, it was not done. Everyone knew what my belief was. Mm. You see, so uh, it's important for people to understand that if they don't do those things, th they don't have an impact in them. You see, they don't make you a man. And if you don't do them, you will, you will heal because it's simply a wound. But more than anything, what is more important is the teaching that you get there about the responsibility 
of what it means to be a man or, or, or what it means to be a closer man. You see, so basically that's that's that. Uh, so that's what I constantly encourage a young men is to say to them, listen, ask your parents, talk to them. And in that process, we pray about it, that the Lord will go before him to soften the hearts of the parents so that they will hear him and understand. And a number of young people are able to go that route. And if your parents then forces you to do that, there are a number of avenues, for an example. One is to not bother yourselves. Allow them to do what they want to do. You take it as a normal meet because remember, anything that happens that creates a bond between you and a, a, a spirit being, it happens as a result one of faith. It happens as a result of agreement. When there's no agreement, nothing is going to happen because you are simply taking it a meat that is given to you. Number two is to simply use the legislative or the law of the country. I can quote about two cases currently that have been in high court in South Africa. One, it's, it happened here in, in Bishop of a, a young man from, uh, forgot his first name, but his name is Yamani, whose father forced him, you know, to, to circumcise. And he did not want to, to be circumcised because he believed that uh, as a believer in Christ Jesus, he is a man, you see. So he took his father to court and he won the case. So even the law on the rights of children protects people who don't want to be part and parcel of those things, you see. But it's important for one to understand that there are avenues. It's talking to your parents, convincing them that you don't want to do this. If you don't want to take this route, you, you, you follow through and you know that you don't believe in this thing because the reality is that it's simply meat. If you don't believe it, in it, 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 it has no power over you, you see. So that, that is my take, and that is what over the years I've seen, and not just in, in my own life, but in the lives of the people that I've, I've worked with, that if you don't believe in this thing, it does not work. So the truth is this, a goat is a goat. <laughs> it, it, it does not have special powers to make you a better person. You know, a sheep... It's simply a sheep. It has no special powers to make you a person. But it is a faith in something that gives that thing power over you. If you don't have faith in it, it will, it will not have what it is said to have. You see? But as a believer, there is no reason for you to do that because it, 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 it has no impact on you because the blood of Christ has done all the work on your behalf. Um. Now, around June and December, yes. um, in the news, we hear a lot of young men dying yes. um, in this process. Yes. And in the new generation now, when they come back, if they manage to come back from um, the initiation school, they come back drinking because then... Yes. They are introduced to alcohol. They are all alone. Um, the people that are supposed to be responsible for them don't have this knowledge that you're talking about now. So, which obviously means now a lot of darkness has infiltrated this, this culture. So now, how then do we educate um, South Africa about about? Yeah. There, there are two main issues for me in this. One is the fact that one of the major problems that we have as a black community is that we have lack of responsible men, a huge one. And that is the result of a number of reasons, you know, um, that even though those reasons are there, we, 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 we don't say it's okay uh, that men... Uh, runs or abdicate their responsibility. Uh, secondly, is that we need to see the church being more involved. More involved in two ways. Getting more involved, one, in educating young people about the culture itself. What is this culture? 
about. You see, is this thing wrong? Is this thing um, right? One of the things that I've come to realize and all the research that I, I, I have studied around this thing is that, and also my experience of interacting with young people, there are point one uh, percent chances of discouraging a Tosa a South African male who whose culture practices circumcision uh, from not doing it. Because there is a lot of stigmatization, a lot of negativity, a lot of rejection when one does not go through that process. So, uh, and unfortunately, the issue of rejection is personal. The issue of, 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 of being called names, it's personal. So when a number of young men go through these things, they go through these things because they run away from that, being called names in the communities and all of those things. So they are willing to put that, uh, to put their lives to go through that because every black male in South Africa does that. Now, then the responsibility of the church then enters in, in one, in educating them about what is this thing. Um, how should you take care of yourself in this thing? Secondly, when they are there in the bush, for may, other male to go in there as teachers, to go in there to teach. For an example, uh, I've got a, a nephew that currently, as we speak, Ungumkwet. He's not alone, he's got four other boys. So my responsibility, while I have asked two guys who, who are accredited uh, nurses to look after them, I go every day to teach them. You see, pray with them, give them the support that they need, you see. So that is one of the fundamental issues that the church have to realize is that circumcision will not be gone tomorrow. While it is here, what do we do? Because as you are saying, and currently so my sister, is that these young, young men, while they are teenagers in our church, they are committed. They love the Lord. They go there. They come back smoking. They come back lying. They come back sexually active. They come back, some of them, even in drugs. So in order for us to save them and, and to protect them is that when they go there, we must follow them and make sure that every day we are there to continue the influence so that they, they are not changed. Because what happens in our community is that when it is circumcision times, even guys that we know that have no direction in life, you will find them there. Why? Because when someone is in the bush, there's food. There's a, it's a space where young men go to. It's a fun place. So these guys, they go there for food because in the township, they don't have food. In the township, they, they don't have access to some of them. They don't even have places to sleep. So while you are there for, for those three, four weeks, there's food, free food. So they go there to get that food. And in that process, they bring their dacha, they, they bring their, their, their booze, they bring th their drugs. And they begin to teach these young males because they are vulnerable while they're there and teach them things that are not true. So the church must get in there and begin to teach the children the truth. Mm -hmm.